to run through some um, uh, decanting water from jerry cans. Uh, it's potable water from jerry cans uh, into the van. Um, we do it with an electric pump. Uh, we carry two jerry can, 20 litre jerry cans on the, uh, on the front of the van in jerry can holes and we carry this 30 litre container in the back of the car. Um, we use it intermittently carrying potable water. Uh, we'll fill it up with um, river water for, for our portable shower um, and then of course we'll clean it out uh, before we put the potable water in to use it. The reason why we uh, decant from this into that is because the small electric pump that we've got uh, won't go through that hole. Um, so we just decant the water from these into the 30 litre container and uh, we've got a, uh, a small whale branded pump which pumps 12 volt pump. Uh, it's an impeller pump, uh, doesn't require to be primed um, and it um, pumps about 13 litres a minute. When you buy the pump uh, you won't get this fitting up here. You'll get about a metre of cable um, which is twin core positive, negative, about a metre long with the wires hanging out of the end of it. Um, so all we've done is uh, connected a piece of plastic, clear plastic Bunnings pipe and a click on fitting um, and a hose connector which stays attached all the time. Uh, we've wired that into a 240 volt um, inline light switch for the house lamps. It's only 12 volts so it doesn't matter, it's going to work quite fine. On the other end of this black lead is a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket uh, plug uh, I should say, and uh, we have a 12 volt uh, outlet or cigarette lighter plug socket at the, uh, at the back of the van just behind the wheels, um, which we installed ourselves. We get our, just get permanent 12 volt power outside the van. So we've got one up there and we've got an Anderson plug under here, which goes directly to the batteries and we can run, um, connect solar panels directly into there uh, via a regulator, of course or we can get 12 volt power out of there by the, uh, by the Anderson plug. So we've got an Anderson plug and a cigarette lighter plug, so it covers all bases. The reason why I put a switch in here is simply because so we can turn it on and off at the pump rather than simply set it all up, uh, connect the pipes, put it all together, plug it into the van, and then go and plug it into the power if we didn't have a switch, and it would run just as well. Uh, if you don't have 12 volt plugs in the van that you can access, um, you may have some inside the van where you can open the window and go across to where the tally is plugged in, uh, or you can reverse the car up here, plug it in the cigarette while it's socket in the car, or do what we've done, put a plug in, it makes it a little bit easier. So what we do, get a garden hose, shoves in there, and then just turn the pump on. And off she goes. And that's about 13 litres a minute. Um, so we plug that into the van's tanks and turn it on. And that'll empty that, that, that container there. Um, in about three minutes, it'll empty the 30 litres. Um, we're just over three minutes. And, um, but that's potable water. We don't put anything into our tanks that's not potable. Um, there's, uh, most of the rivers in Australia are full of germies, gyms, um, cysts, bacteria. Uh, Guardia, um, and, and I'm not going to take the risk uh, of poisoning my entire caravan system by pumping water in there from an unknown source. So we just don't do it. But what you can do, um, we also carry a best water filter. Um, it's said to be one micron in size. Um, it'll remove chemicals, chlorine, taste. Um, it stops bacteria, parasites, cryptogardia and cysts. That's, that's the key to this thing. It's got a silver safe, which is some kind of a proprietary um, silver um, material inside it, which kills the bacteria as the water's running through it. It supposedly treats 5,000 litres, doesn't have a, an expiry date. It runs both ways. Um, you plug it in and, uh, and it will run. It'll run through that, that um, from the little pump. But you'll see that the pressure that's coming out of that now is, uh, is nowhere near the pressure um, that will be coming out of it when it comes directly out of the, out of the hose itself. Um, so, you know, with that particular small pump, um, it's probably doing it a little bit too hard for my liking and uh, I'd be a bit concerned that I'd be, you know, maybe doing some damage to that pump over the long term by forcing water uh, through this filler. But it's doable uh, and you can pump uh, if you're clean enough and you, you trust these sort of things enough you can then decant river water uh, and so forth straight into your water tanks um, 
but um, I'll stress, we don't do it. I've never ever put uh, any water in my tanks that's not potable water. Um, certainly put um, water in there uh, from bores. Um, unfortunately, there's generally no way around that. Um, you're gonna find bore water somewhere, um, but it's potable, it's drinkable, it's not poisonous, doesn't have bacteria in it. Um, but as far as river water, tank water on the side of the road, uh, in campgrounds, um, in roadside stops, picnic areas and rest stops and things like that, there's no way on God's earth I'm putting that water in my tank because once you run it through the tank, it runs through the entire plumbing system of the van and if there is guardia or cysts or bacteria in that water, it's going to poison the entire system. And uh, then you're going to have to treat it uh, with some kind of, uh, you know, whether you run bleach through the tanks and then pump it through all the, all the taps and try and clean it out or some chlorine tablets or something like that, which is, I don't know whether it leaves a, a, a taste. It's just not worth it. We've travelled all, we've travelled around Australia um, over extended periods of time and we've never been in a position where we've been required to put um, any kind of non-potable water into our tanks and we've, I think we've used that, that filter maybe, maybe a handful of times um, and that would be about it. We've used it very, very little. We've found that we don't need to use it. Uh, we rely on the camp shower and with the camp shower, we can source the water from anywhere. So we don't have to touch the water in the tanks and replace it with, uh, with non-potable water because we don't rely on the shower. And that's the key to how we camp. Um, and although it's probably possibly not ideal for everybody, and you know, I don't mind it, um, it doesn't bother me in the slightest, I don't need to go inside to have a shower, I'm quite happy to have it outside. Some people may not be that way inclined, um, but it's, it's probably the, the, the easiest and best way um, you can stay off the grid for an extended period of time. And, and that's primarily why we do it.